Welcome back. Today we are flipping the script. I'm flipping the script. As we let Ryan Holsappel, a broadcasting student from Huntington University, interview Nick and Jason from Mosaic Minds. I'm Nick, by the way. This is just a wig. Join Ryan as he dives into the origins of Mosaic Minds and what the future holds. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to Mosaic Minds. My name is Ryan Holzapple, and I'm interviewing Nick and Jason here today. Welcome to Mosaic Minds, the podcast where every episode is a colorful blend of perspectives, ideas, and conversation. Each week, our diverse team of hosts brings their unique backgrounds, experiences, and interests to the table. Mosaic Minds is your invitation to join the conversation to see the world through a kaleidoscope of viewpoints. So grab a seat, tune in, and let the mosaic unfold before you. My name is Ryan Holzapple, and I'm interviewing Nick and Jason here today. Um, a little bit about myself. I am a student at Huntington University. I'm part of the FDN sports program we have on campus. And my goal is to make it into the sports industry, whether it's running the camera, talking over the broadcast, or just being any part in the sports industry, preferably basketball, because that's always what I've been passionate about. So I'm here getting a little bit of experience with guys who also have backgrounds in that kind of stuff. So I'm doing for a good night. Man, that's a blessing because basketball, Ryan, as you well know, we we know each other through pickleball just so the audience knows. But uh, basketball was my sport from 3 to 38, so 35 years of playing, living up in a Hoosier. You know, my my playing was uh, playing basketball and shooting the three-pointer by myself on, on my barn and my gravel court. So I'm going to stop there, but I that's, that's interesting. And, and you can chase your dream. Basketball is a great sport. It's been a blessing to me, so – I'm going to let you kind of dig in and uh, have at it. Yeah. So to start off, so I kind of talked about my background, and this applies to both of you, and you can go one at a time. Uh, what is your to your background in sports industry? I know, Jason, you just talked about basketball a little bit, but what's like, what like, how did you get to where you, you are now within the industry to both of you? Jason, you want to go first? Well, I, I want to differentiate us a little bit, Ryan, just to give you a good uh, a framework here. Nick's more of a musical guy, okay? He appreciates sports. Oh, cool. He likes sports. I'm your sports player, if you will. Like, I'm kind of oh, moving okay. and shaking, and he is as well. But just to give you some little bit of framework. So um, here's what I'm going to say. Uh, I took broadcasting 25 years ago. I never got to develop that passion because I went back to business school. I'm like a little kid in a candy store, man. Just it's, it's a pleasure to have you asking me questions because I'm busy asking questions. But more importantly, um, dad was a high school coach. I got uh, free golf. I had access to a basketball gym. I played a lot of tennis. I played a lot of baseball. Me and my dad would talk crap to each other and play ping pong. Um, there's not a lot of sports that I haven't played. I'm not bragging, but I feel like I'm competitive and I like to give back to the community. So that's the way I'm going to answer it. I'm, I'm, I'm helping a, a fellow broadcaster, if you will, hopefully. And, uh, I've, I, I haven't helped you a ton, but I see that you're passionate about it. I see that you want to get your start. And quite frankly, I think it's an honor to be talking with you and having that. So I'm going to deflect over to Nick and let him kind of take the same question. Yeah. Yeah. So, so my background is, uh, like I said, I'm not, I'm not a huge sports guy, but, um, I like anything live. So like anything, you know, I, I go to any, any game live cause the energy is just like going to a concert or something like that. Um, but my background is in education. I've worked in a financial aid for the past 15 years and um, we this this podcast was really just kind of a, a project that me and Jason wanted to do to kind of you know just hang out you know what I mean just yep. something fun to do outside of work and um, it's taken off a lot a lot more than what we would have anticipated and it's just it's a lot of fun we got to, to meet a lot of uh, people that we would have never gotten a chance to talk to otherwise and. So, yeah, it's been a lot of fun as far as the music part goes. I like music. I wouldn't say I'm a musician. Um, I can, I've can i played the guitar for like 20 years. I should be way better than I am, but I like, <laughs> do like to play the guitar and sing. Um, but, yeah, so that's that's pretty much my background. I, I, do, I got three kids. My oldest is in college. 
Um, she just started her sophomore year. My youngest is 15. He just started his freshman year in high school. So that's my background. <laughs> that's cool. I mean, you say that like, you know, you're not really into sports and stuff and it's like that. That's cool. Everyone has their own interests, but I actually, um, at school at uh, Huntington university, I did a radio show for our live, um, music, uh, radio station, uh, that cool. we have one Oh, one Oh five point five. Um, I always thought that Huntington. Fun to do. Yeah. And so I did live radio DJ with one of my friends, uh, Ross Gosnell, who Jason knows from uh, Action Sports Network. And we we created the show called HU Overtime is what we called it as a funny little name. But um, yeah, we we had a lot of music. So it, I like music, too. It's a it's a fun industry. Absolutely. You'd appreciate this as a little sidebar, Ryan, just real quick. And uh, when I was down at VU, we would have the ability to do our own segment a half hour to an hour on the low watt station. So you could only hear us probably three to five miles out. There wasn't anybody on it. We're not fooling anybody, but my buddy thought it would be funny to have a format to talk about minuscule sports. So we would literally say in New Zealand, they had a, they had a, they had a sailing tournament and New Zealand beat, uh, anyway, I'll stop there. Cause it was so funny that everybody was wanting to talk like major league baseball. And we were talking these minuscule sports that we thought it was funny, but no, everybody else was probably like, I got to get these jokers off and listen to something else. So just thought I'd give a little humor to it. So yeah. I'm gonna let you maybe fire away. Yeah. I mean, I, I'll tell you what I actually, that's the kind of stuff me and Ross did that once or twice as well. It was, it was always really good time messing with like those kinds of sports, we did one. Uh, we did badminton, uh, like a Chinese badminton yep. tournament. Yep. <laughs> we like no, covered that because we covered a lot of Indiana sports. We're like, you know what? Let's go something bizarre. And um, and the professor wasn't too happy because we didn't tell her we were doing that. But it was it was pretty funny. It was a good time. Hey, that's um, the best. You go rogue. Yeah. You know, go go rogue sometimes. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So you guys kind of talked about how um, you guys started the podcast overall. You know, you guys started as an idea to just kind of talk and hang out. But can you explain a little bit further on that, on how you guys met each other and how did starting a podcast just come about? Like how how, how was that idea formed between the two of you? Yeah. That's a good question. I'm going to let Nick take off. Yeah. So so me and me and Jason know each other from work. We both work at the same college. <clears throat> different departments, but we work, uh, we work very closely together. So, uh, we kind of bonded at work and, you know, just through, you know, just, uh, just through shooting the shit at work or whatever, you know, we kind of found a common ground and we're like, you know, he talked about his background in broadcasting and I'd been talking about wanting to start a podcast for a long time. So, um, we just put our heads together and we, uh, I, I basically all said the same thing I said to the last guest that was asking us about this, but, um, we, um, uh, we wanted to do something that we could get different perspectives, different ideas, different backgrounds, different beliefs, things like that, different personalities, all in the same room to respect each other and talk about their, you know, their impact on, on life. <clears throat> and we started out with three co-hosts. Um, it was me and Jason and then um, a, a girl and she ended up not being able to see it through. But if you go back to early episodes, you'll see her in like the first four or five Um but yeah, so so we have basically the whole title Mosaic Minds is it's based on having a whole mosaic of guests, you know, and and topics. So, you know, everyone will tell you if you're going to of course our goal is nef not necessarily ever to 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 be famous on YouTube or anything like that, but you know, if you're ever going to be successful in social media, you got to niche down. You got to niche down. You got to find. You know. You got to. You got to find something specific, and then niche that down even in order to get a faithful fan base. Well, uh, we wanted to kind of go against the grain and do the opposite, and instead we wanted to have a whole. You know, a whole diverse uh, group of topics and different kinds of guests. So that's what we've done. Um, we did get to a point where we've, we've had the discussion, like, should we kind of try to find a specific topic? But, you know, it's been, it's been doing so, it's been so successful on its own that we just, you know, we just decided that we're going to kind of see, you know, stick it out the way that we've been doing it. I think I'm going to let my passion boil over and I'm going to give you a little inspiration. So I'm kind of telling you inspiration, but I'm answering the question. So here's what you got to realize, man. Dream big. Okay. Nick and I have talked with two Hall of Fame basketball players, a guy that was the most, arguably one of the most uh, socialite, socialite 
figures of the 60s and 70s that kind of ran the town, had a bar named after him with his last name on it, right? We just talked with an Elton John impersonator from Boston, Massachusetts that invited us to Fenway Park. So I can't stress to you the importance of doing a good job, being in sports. You'll be surprised how many people want to see you succeed that see you at that local basketball game. My former AU coach is on a similar network and does stuff on that network. So what I'm trying to say is you're a good person. Your dad's a good person. Your mother's a good person. You're great people that we see you at the courts and we know each other from pickleball just so the crowd kind of knows. But I think what I'm going to challenge you with is think outside the walls of your college. Think great things. Take your professor's advice because you'll be surprised. We just got off a phone. We just got off a call, Nick, just so I'm setting the tone right. The guy was charging $20,000, am I right? Something like that, yeah. He was charging $20,000 to be on people's podcast or having as a guest, and we're sitting there casually talking to him. So with all due respect to you, yes, we were a couple minutes late with you, but all I'm trying to inspire you and get you to understand is if you're a good person, you like talking basketball, go for it. Grab that camera. Uh, intern, you know, let, let your school flex their muscles because those profs are experts at their field well outside the walls of your campus. So hopefully that inspired you a little bit. Hopefully it gave you some advice. And quite frankly, you know, a Colts player the other day uh, posted our podcast, but then you look at his friends, Edrin James, Reggie Wayne, Peyton Manning. Those names there are like, wow, but it's cool to see that probably a couple of those guys might've watched our podcast in the last couple of days because of that. So the inspiration I'm trying to give you is shoot for the stars. If you get halfway there, you're happy and you're talking basketball and you're talking sports. So that's a win. Yeah, I mean, for sure. I mean, that that's the goal, right, in life is to dream high, dream big, and hope that you make it. And, I mean, even if you make it halfway to that, that that you reach your goal of being able to have a, a great job that you enjoy. And I definitely am uh, trying to take full advantage of uh, my professors like Adam Weiner, who has – like a gazillion connections within both news, uh, broadcasting, sports, and music industry. I mean, he's he's kind of connected everywhere. So I'm definitely trying to use him as well as I just recently was talking to a uh, guy um, named Andy, and he's the head of Action Sports Network that Ross works for. Uh, my friend nice. Ross from Huntington, and he reached out to me asking if I wanted to talk about things. So who knows? I might be getting That's into awesome. Uh, broadcasting with Action Sports Network this year. You're going to get there because I've suggested your name. You know the guy that suggested your name. You got some people from the inside. So yeah, just keep doing great things on it and you're going to you're going to knock the door down. You're going to yeah, knock the door down sure. and, and, and run with it. Yeah, I hope so and that's definitely a dream come true. And you so you talked about um the whole Mosaic Minds how it came about, the whole the idea of the title is bringing together um, a person from here, a person from there, when it comes to different categories of life to kind of all bring into just one cohesive uh, group of just hanging out and chatting, which I think mm -hmm. is really cool. And that's something that I think is a little bit different and interesting about uh, the podcast because I, I watched your episode with uh, – rick barry and it was pretty cool because yeah. me personally as an nba fan i know who rick barry is i'm a warriors oh, yeah. fan partially because of steph oh, yeah. curry he's an awesome legend and it was so cool to just see him talk and have fun which is really cool ryan let me comment on that just real quick and not take you off track yeah. you know how cool it is for me imagine me playing a little cracker jack box gym nick with 200 people at it 300 people at it on a friday night barely clapping when you, you know you got 80 points in the game but point i'm making is i'm sitting here talking about draining three pointers with rick barry if you looked at my shot you'd laugh me off the campus because my shot's the ugliest shot in the county but it was the highest percentage so i'll brag but talking and rubbing elbows and nick i think nick enjoys it too of just absolutely being able to socialize from people with all different walks of life and, and getting them to see that so to me the mosaic is uh let me give you a little story in art class, and I was terrible at art, Nick, and I couldn't paint anything, they would give us a palette, and they would give us the colors, and you mix those colors together to create other colors. That, to me, is what we do on the podcast. We take a, a random mixture of pop culture, sports. We get to flex our muscles because we don't have to talk about a topic such as banking, real estate, interest rates. We get to talk to all people from all different walks of life, and what we found is a lot of people are similar. People are winners. 
They're passionate about what they do. And uh, it's galvanized a friendship for Nick and I. I would walk through a wall for this guy. And quite frankly, he's the tech guy. I'm not the tech guy. He's the guy that does the camera work. I'm not the camera guy. But I like to talk. I like to I like to scratch that niche that I didn't get to scratch about 25 years ago, which is being behind a microphone. So, yeah, Nick, really, go I mean, ahead. Really, I mean, it's, it's just about... Uh, and you know this. I mean, you're the, this is what you're going to school for. But you know, it's just about people. You know, if you can if you can talk to talk to people, it doesn't matter if if it's something that you that you know or that you don't know. You know, like we've we've had we've had people on here that neither one of us know anything about the subject. But you know, we'll do a little research on them, of course. But um, that's why they're on there, and that's what makes the conversation inter- interesting. Is you know because you don't know, you have more questions. You know, you have you have more things that you can find out that that you didn't you know that you didn't already have in your in your data bank back there. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I'm gonna throw you a nugget real quick, and then I'm gonna let you kind of proceed. Um, broadcasting with your behind the mic, to be honest with you, in sports, to me, it's rapid fire. Mm-hmm. Okay, if you're a color analyst. Go ahead and say that the guy tickled the twine from 30 feet and you're the janitor's worst nightmare because he's going to be changing the nets. But what I'm saying is, as soon as the three-point hits and you know it's your game time, say it. Because, for instance, as a color analyst, if you're more vocal, you're heard more. Mm-hmm. But you, you're not vocal every every possession, but you're trying to give me a sense of if I'm sitting in my backyard with a barbecue and a Pepsi in my hand, what's going on in that. So that's just a little piece of advice. Be confident, be quick, be witty. I think those are skill sets far from just the normal run of the mill, you know, classroom talk uh, with that. So I'm going to defer back to you and and go from there. Yeah, I mean, I, I appreciate that advice because that's actually the thing that I do at FDN Sports most of the time. If I'm announcing, I'm the color analyst, which you know deals nice. with the stats and the yep. you know the hey stories, what happened with this person during the season, and what are they kind of doing. So I always found it really fun to kind of just you inter- get to interject geek out a little bit. Yeah, you get yeah, to show exactly. your show your exactly. basketball knowledge a little bit. Yep. Yeah, it's always a lot of Absolutely. fun, even in softball too and stuff like that. So uh, moving on from all of that, obviously I talked about the Rick Barry, but just like I know you, uh, Jason, you kind of covered it, but what is it like to be able to just, I mean, cause obviously I don't have this experience because I, I don't run the podcast, but what is it like to be able to just hold a podcast with your friend and interview legends and people that from all different walks of life that like most people don't have, um, don't get to experience in their life. Jason, you want to take this one, man? Phenomenal question. And, and I'm, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a high level guy. I have pride. You know me that man, but you almost brought me to tears when you asked me that question. And imagine 25 years of your life that you've provided for your family. You've done, you've kind of, you've kind of put on the armor that you have to put on to, to honor your family and to do things. But then this hobby here is amazing because not only do I get to hang out with Nick, this isn't work. This is fun. I'm talking with people. I we talked to a guy named Salvador just now that plays the piano that did Elton John covers, mm-hmm. and then I talked fun. to a football player. I talked to a musician. So I guess what I'm going to say is, is to me, it it's great to be behind the mic again, but it's also great to see the milestones because, you know, a hurricane only approaches after a day or two, and you know when the hurricane's coming. But we're not a hurricane yet. But I got to be honest with you, man. We're making some waves out there. You know, fifty-five thousand views, and a lot of those views have come on to us in the last sixty to ninety days. And I got to be honest with you, I think that's a, I think that's a tip of the iceberg because we're building momentum. So I know I, I know I kind of sidebarred that question a little bit, but that's that's my answer to the best of my ability. What, what are you thinking, Nick? Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's a it's a fantastic experience. You know, it's something that I look forward to every week. Um, and to be honest with you, even the stuff that I don't look forward to, I still like. Um, like the the edit the editing, because I'll tell you, man, that can be taxing. Mm-hmm. You know, like I I would love. I was telling Jason, I'm I'm not extremely concerned about you know us just blowing up. Of course, everybody wants that, right? So that'd be great. But I would like to get to the point where we can at least have uh, enough funding come in to where. I can outsource the editing because man, I tell you what, that is, it takes some time, you know, like I, there's been many a nights where I've been up all night doing that because I had to, you know, get it posted at 5am the next morning. Ryan, this is off topic, but you're going to experience this and, uh, and, and your dad will experience this. We're going to get into a match sometime on the court and it's going to surprise you and it's going to randomly happen. Okay. (laughs) 
me, yourself, or your dad is going to get into a match against an extremely high level team. Okay. And we're going to win, right? Mm -hmm. Because we're all skilled enough, but it's all confidence, man. To be honest with you, there's a tenth of a second left. I'm not bragging, but if there's 100 people in the room, all 100 people should be wanting to take that shot. Oh, yeah. So I guess that's kind of the way we look at it is you're not going to get a lot of yeses. I mean, I'm just being honest with you. But at the same time, if I'm constantly doing my homework... I'm doing homework for this podcast, man, at 11.30, 1 o'clock in the morning, 2 o'clock in the morning. I'm trying to find interesting guests, but but that's what I'm going to tell you. Take pride in your craft, and good things are going to happen and follow with that. Yeah, that's, I mean, yeah, that is definitely um, some knowledge and life advice that everyone should be using uh, for sure. I mean, yeah, I mean. I, I hope we run into that point where we're on the courts and we're beating someone who's uh, probably twice my skill level. That'd be awesome. Dave Weinbeck. <laughs> or Weinbach. We're actually, we're, actually, we're actually close there. We're letting the cat out of the bag, but we're close there uh, for an interview. But uh, I, I, think, I think basketball is pickleball is whatever sport you want to put in there. Golf is a good example. If you're confident, you're going to do well. And Nick's world, you know, he's done some good covers and some good original material and to be honest with you, man, I just sit there and I'm like, man, I'm so jealous that this dude can just strum out music. I know there's a lot of hard work and preparation, but I know there's a lot of hard work and preparation in the way that I know you and the sport we've played together, but just in broadcasting in general, because it's not easy. Yeah. You work a lot more hours that aren't classroom credit hours. You're just, you're just honing your craft is what you're doing in those hours of the week. Yeah, I mean, and Nick, to go back on editing, trust me, I know. I, I'm i a big <laughs> part of the uh, film industry when it comes to, like, in my college. Like, um, a lot of my classes have to do with film because they kind of intertwine with television and broadcasting. So, trust me, I know all about editing and the long nights well, of editing. <laughs> I tell you what, so, soak all that up because I... I've, I'm self-taught, you know, like, so like I had to, I had to do, I had to go to the YouTube university, you know what I mean? To, mm-hmm. to get that, get the knowledge. But, um, all right. Now, do they teach you at your school or do you learn, um, is it final cut pro? Is that what they're, um, what they use? Or? No, they, they have a teacher. We had a class called the art of editing that we took where we had a teacher teach, teach us how to edit. Um, I mean, they use videos to show from like pro editors, but I mean, a lot of it is self-taught as well as um, just having fellow people there who are trying to hone their craft of editing, helping you as well, which is really cool. Do you have a favorite? Just and this is just for my own personal knowledge. Yeah. Do you have a Do you have a favorite um, editing program that you like to use? So I did a lot of voiceover stuff for uh, for the radio show that me and Ross did HBO mm-hmm. time. We did a lot of sweepers on the radio of you know ads that kind of stuff. I personally really like Adobe Audition. Because it's a lot of audio, really? audio editing, uh, and I think audio. it's a little okay. bit easier than video. Okay, right on. Yeah, it's a lot of fun to do sometimes if you have the right um, sound effects and stuff for it. Yeah, I mean, I, I like I said, I can geek out on that kind of. Stuff. I, I'd like <laughs> to, I'd like to learn how to do, um, um, you know, like put beats together. I think that would be mm-hmm. cool. But see, that's totally foreign to me. I, I wouldn't know what. I, mean, I, I feel like I got an ear for it, but like, I don't know how to use any of that kind of software. So I would have to totally learn that. But I think that'd be cool. Like, you know, kind of create our own bumper music. And because uh, I still every once in a while, even though I always use the royalty free stuff, you know, even try to mix mm-hmm. it up a little bit. Somehow, every once in a while, I still get a copyright hit. So it'd be nice to put my, you know, put our yeah. own, um, our own stuff together. Hey, Ryan, don't let this guy fool you, man. The same backpack that I have with every pickleball paddle in the last 10 years it's out and fishing poles and stuff this man has more technology and like <laughs> this dude came over the other day and had to charge his cell phone and it folds in half i know i know that's <laughs> laughing but i'm the guy that barely has a freaking flip phone that has anything but uh, i will pay him a compliment he's he's definitely he's definitely i'm not saying trendy but he's definitely in the know when it comes to technology i'm one of those guys that i'm simple if you show me something i gotta see it three or four times and i get it as he well knows but i'm far from tech so um you know that's just me though yeah i mean everyone has their own things that they excel at and that's why team um effort and partnerships work so well because you combine those two strengths which yeah is always the best part um so uh jason you kind of touched on this a little bit um 
when you're talking about you're staying up late nights trying to get in touch with these people how like what is the like behind the scenes of how you get in touch with people like rick barry because i mean for me personally i wouldn't even know how to start on how to get um connected to someone like that man that's a great question and the reason it's a great question is because we just literally spent time with a future guest um kind of picking his brain and when i talk about us having three thousand subscribers he mentioned the number 400 some thousand nick if you don't mind i'm looking i'm literally looking at his instagram right now and he's got uh 28 000 followers but, uh, hey. which isn't you know maybe that, but but on facebook i think he said his group has like 400 000 in in wow. the in his facebook group but yeah. this this guy's big time <laughs> so the way that i'm gonna tell you in my low-tech world of doing this is I'm not going to, I'm just going to be direct with you. I don't even know what I'm doing, to be honest with you, but here's what I will tell you. I'm just simply scrolling through Facebook. I'm looking for all the sponsored ads. If I see that you do something that I feel like fits our format, I spend 15 minutes researching you. I watch what you do. With all due respect to you, Nick has a difference in opinion than I do on this a little bit, but we're both cut out of the same mold. We don't want somebody that's arrogant, that's just cussing left and right. I mean, but at the same time that I'm speaking for that, he's not speaking for that, but yet we don't want somebody that's boring and quiet and just uninteresting, right? We want to, we want to try to beef it up, spice it up a little bit, but that's how I do mine. And then quite frankly, I can give you 75 people that haven't given me the time of day, but I can give you those people that we have lined up for future (coughs) that are there. So I guess what I'm going to say is, I don't want to name names, but the guy that's on a mural that was a former Pacer player that everybody knows about that has a number somewhere in the 30s because you got to be careful when you mention names. But what I'm saying is, you know, you're not very far from that person because, Ryan, with all due respect, if you were a – let me ask you an honest question. If you were a great basketball player in the NBA and you were getting paid a lot of money and I said Mosaic Mines, you would look at us and probably not want to be on you send them an article or a, or a story with Rick Barry, I got to be brutally honest with you. The biggest superstar in the NBA right now is going to be very impressed. Holy crap, you had an icon of the sport on there. That's what we're trying to do in every industry, music, pop mm-hmm. culture, uh, NASCAR, fishing, wrestling, just to name a couple. Yeah, so. one thing that Jason is is very good at, <clears throat> I can't remember if we said that on this episode or if it was the last one, but one thing Jason is very good at is, is networking. And so – by it's kind of a snowball effect you know um but the big i'd say the biggest thing though when it comes to getting guests is you know just you got to remember that they're all people you know what i mean like no they're just they're people just like us like i i would say that you would probably be able to get um rick barry on on if you if you started a show if for no other reason than just because you know, he sees a young guy that's trying to do something, you know, in sports. He's trying to create a show. He just seems like the kind of guy that would be like, yeah, man, I'll, I'll help you out. And I tell you what, he was he was talking about our kind of our difference in opinion. I, I So the way I look at it is if we – controversy gets clicks. So, like, if, if we uh, have a few controversial episodes yeah. – and that builds our people, then we get to have more of the people that we actually want to, not that we don't want to talk to those people, but that we actually really want to talk to, you know, like, like he was talking about, like, uh, the, the, the man who will not be mentioned or whatever from the Pacers, you know, like, so, so, you know, like that, you know, we can, we can get more, more people on by, by having, having those kind of people. Um, but yeah, I mean, just, you know, just to, to remember that there, you will be surprised just from the law of averages, you'll be surprised if you message a uh, hundred people that you're a fan of, how many people will respond back for one and two might even just be like, yeah, you know, I'll give it a shot. Yeah. Let, let me give you a little perspective, Ryan. So here's, here's the way that it works and here's what we're trying to do. And we're doing it with you tonight without even maybe realizing it. We're giving you 30 minutes or 45 minutes of airtime to tell your story. Mm-hmm. So it's just as much about you as it is us. And this is this is fun. But here's the deal. Talk with your instructors. Talk to your friend. There's got to be a way that you can project. You know, I'm going to call it a, a term that you'll appreciate. It's a flex for you. But I'm going to tell you right now, I don't want to volunteer for them. But some of the names we've mentioned in this that have been on our podcast 
they would probably simulcast in a classroom in front of 30 students and letting everybody throw random questions at them. Because look at it like this. They want to talk to people. They want to be in front of people. They want they want to talk about their future projects. So really, when you start talking to a Hall of Famer and he gets to mention a project or two, you know, I'm going to throw it out there again, Dropping Dimes Foundation. Mm -hmm. Do you realize that the old ABA players that are 75 years old that have knees and stuff that they need operated on that can't afford it? I got news for you. Those guys are entitled, in my opinion, because you wouldn't have 30 and $40 million salaries if it wasn't for those trailblazers mm -hmm. out there that are paving yeah. the way, mm -hmm. you know? So, yeah. so very, very, very informational, hopefully to give you that sense of, I can almost guarantee a high level guest. If you want to talk to him and do what you need to for a project or just quite frankly, to talk basketball, because now that I know you like basketball, I love basketball. Mm -hmm. We've got another hall of famer artist Gilmore, uh, that's, yeah. that's scheduling with us just to kind of throw out a name to you. So he, yeah. or, we're really excited about that. So he's got some local connection and, and Kentucky connection, but um, I know artist Gilmore, big, kind of big there, time so. Chicago bowl legend. He's awesome. There you go. Yeah. There you go. Well, and Nick, uh, it's kind of funny. Like what you were saying is, is actually matches up perfectly with, uh, one of my professors at Huntington university, his name's Lance Clark. He's kind of the whole head of our entire DMA program. He's more of the film side of things than broadcasting. But in mm -hmm. one of the classes that we had, production uh, three, which was uh, st like um, like decorating for film sets, basically, is like what the class was about. So nothing to do with like what my profession is or what I want to do. But one of the things you taught me in class that kind of stuck with me that it kind of lined up with what you just said was um, no one is too big to reach out to, which is something that um, I think that is actually pretty uh, cool that you um that you just said as well because it um i've taken that to heart and, and me and uh, ross have tried to interview the people at um our college that most people will probably be like oh no they're too important but we're like you know what let's go for yeah, it yeah 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 and they're and they're surprising you guys are probably surprised by the fact that they're more than willing mm -hmm. to do it because hey you know you're doing something for for our institution right yeah so yeah, absolutely. And you know, that applies not only to this, but like to every, any kind of business, because, you know, like I, I went to a, a conference a few weeks back and they were talking about, you know, Jason and I work at a college and they were talking, so it was kind of specific to the college industry. And they were talking about um, the importance of getting political figures involved in your campus and in, and in your college and especially for for-profit schools, because we're kind of looked down upon, you know, we're not, we're, we're private, we're not public. So um, one of the things they said was, you know, when it comes to inviting politicians to your campus, whether it be like someone local or whether it even be someone more on the national level, that, you know, the, the, biggest, the biggest thing that you can do is actually ask. Because you'd be surprised how many of them will will yep. say, yeah, you know, yeah, absolutely. I'd love to come see what you got going on there, especially if, if it's if they're the constituents of, you know, that vote mm -hmm. for this person. So, yeah, I mean, I think that I think that applies to any aspect of business. Yeah, for sure. That's awesome. Yeah, I, I mean, I just thought that was really cool that it lined up. And that is definitely advice for anyone out there who's kind of like me searching for uh, ways to make it big is just shoot for it you might as well i mean what's the harm they don't respond or they say no i mean it's not like yeah, they're gonna exactly. send a, uh, a hate you know like no right. i would never do exactly. it right now they're just gonna say no which is which is fine there are plenty more out there yeah and you don't have to tell your friends about the people that you didn't get you mm -hmm. know what i mean You'll, yeah, yeah we don't we, you only tell, you we, only tell yeah, about we the won't people we won't talk about the other 10 <laughs> hall of famers that won't check or give us a time yeah. of day we just talk about the ones we've had on that's so right yeah, that's, yeah. that's that's but see the thing that's so cool about this is those same guys that have already been on, I mean, honestly, I had one guy give me a Hall of Famers, and then a week later, I'm talking to Dan Issel, oh, yeah. Hall of Famer for the Nuggets. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's amazing. Like, you'll get an opportunity with your pops to go to that next year. Bob Costas is the yeah. keynote speaker. They're going to have a Hall of Fame level talent somewhere. Nick, I'd like you to go if possible. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's it's phenomenal, man, meeting the people with Indy 500. All I'm trying to say is we're blessed to sit here and talk to you, but we're also blessed to galvanize our friendship, galvanize mm -hmm. the microphone and connect it with various, you know, various avenues throughout the year, you know, throughout the, you know, actually I said year throughout the half year that we've been doing yeah, this. That's amazing. It seems like we're further up the path. It does. Now. Yeah. So since February. Yep. 
Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's really cool. And you guys are talking about um, how, like, you know, how fun it is to do this podcast, which, I mean, it really does. You guys seem like you have a great time on this podcast, and it's just kind of a laid-back, chill time to hang out with people that you probably never met and just pick their mind about things. So what is one of each of your favorite, like, moments or episodes of a podcast that you've done so far? I'll let you go first. Man, that's a loaded question, but um, I'm – with all due respect to all the guests, I'm going to I'm gonna kind of walk the line here. Uh, I'm not Johnny Cash, by the way. I'm too <laughs> poor because I don't have it. But anyway, poor humor. Poor humor. <laughs> what I'm going to say is there was a comment in a specific episode, and I've already mentioned this once tonight in another episode, but here's how it looked. A guy was explaining being carried out of the arena in the body bag by the undertaker and how much it stunk. <laughs> To, to be honest with you, man, that gave me cold chills because I'm fascinated by the Undertaker. I'm sorry, but the dude the dude walked on the top rope at six foot ten. You realize his real name, look at his real name and look that he hooped. He was mm-hmm. a he was a rough power forward. Go figure. We were talking about the popcorn in the arena, the strobe lights, and it was so cool and powerful that it it, it, it was amazing to say that it felt like I was in the arena covering the vent behind the mic. Let me give you, let me finish that answer with this. I'm going to give you some guys that I want you to be able to research and this podcast. will make it easy research. Let me mention some names, John Madden, Billy Packer, Brent Musburger. Um, those were some of my influences. My number one influence was real quick was the bash radio in Wabash, Indiana. I would literally get home before Wrigley Field. This dates me, but before Wrigley Field had lights in the mid 80s, I'm going to tell you I listened to probably 145 to 150 nine inning games on the radio with Harry Carey. Oh, that's cool. So that's why I went into broadcasting, and that's why I like seeing that you do because you have the positive influences. You have so much at your fingertips that I didn't have because when I was doing it, we were using carts. Mm -hmm. find out what that is ask your instructor he'll start (laughs) laughing you know find out that you know dead air you just literally started talking now with all due respect you could probably read half of a book and be gone for 20 minutes and the the things just queuing it up Mm -hmm. so sorry that was such a long answer but that covered a lot or uncovered a lot for me yeah yeah i mean i i think that uh so after I would so I have two answers. Okay, I, I don't know that I have a favorite guest because mm-hmm. yeah, one of the things I would say is my favorite guest is the last guest mm-hmm. because me and Jason will will after like we'll be talking about you you know for probably thirty minutes after this is over you know like hey that was so cool you know like yeah. you know <laughs> we do that we do that after after every episode so like I would say that as far as my favorite guest it's whoever the last guest was but. Yeah. Um, the most exciting one for me, and this, and this might be weird, especially to Jason to hear this, but because it's outside of my wheelhouse, but was probably Bob Nedelicki because oh. that was the first real big person that we had on. And not only was he, there were so many things that we were able to talk to him about besides basketball. Yeah. I mean, like he was, he was like, when I researched him, I'm like, oh, this is going to be fun because like he was, he had a, he had a bar. He was, he was like the king of Indy back in the day, right? He had a bar here in Indy called Nettos. And, um, he was like the, he was like the, uh, the sex symbol of Indy of Indianapolis, you know? And like he hung out with Elvis and yeah. just, he had all kinds of awesome yeah. stories, you know? And I could just kind of like, I was feeling like I was like living vicariously through him going back in time and in, in Indianapolis, you know? So it was, it was really cool. I'd say that was probably my favorite, um, not necessarily guest, but my favorite moment. Yeah. Yeah. He would talk about like, uh, Dr. J and George Gervin, like yeah. <laughs> he's buddies, he's competitors. Yeah. Like he would say, Hey, when you talk to this guy or, you know, I blocked this guy and it, that just blows my mind that like, I've never been, I've been on the court with a few players at Purdue, but man, when you're talking about Dr. J and George yeah. Irvin and competing, I mean, that just is amazing. But I, I, I second that man. Cause he was, he was the man. Yeah. He was the man yeah. that still is. What's he was cool just about chilling, him? Like he was just chilling in his living room with his phone, you know, like wife in the background, all that, you know, just having like you would have thought we would have that we'd known him for years. I mean, and, and that was I think that was the moment that I realized that nobody is off limits. Mm-hmm. Like, yep. I mean, like yep. we, we could literally talk to anybody. And it also kind of uh, I was going to say this earlier, but we, it also kind of makes you realize 
how small the world actually is and how we really all are one group of people. You know what I mean? Like we mm-hmm. separate ourselves in our head of like, you know, there's celebrities and then there's the rich people and there's poor people and there's these people and you know what I mean? But yeah. like we're, we're all, we're all children of God. Right. So, I mean, it's just, it's, that's when I realized that we could, we could have the ability to talk to pretty much anybody. Ryan, I'm name dropping you tonight, but this is great to be able to name drop, right? Because some mm-hmm. people we can even name drop that haven't been on. I'm going to share you, share with you a one minute story real quick. When I went to that event and Dan Issel was speaking a guy named Mark Monteith. If you don't know who it is, look him up. He's, he's one of the most highly respected broadcasters in Indianapolis. I'm talking Indy 500 Colts, you name a sport in Indianapolis and he's, he's the guy. Okay. okay. This guy invites me to this event and I, I sit down at a table and I'm very proud of my profession. Don't get me wrong. I love doing it. That's something I'll do the rest of my life, but hear me out. I look at the guy across from me. Well, what do you do, sir? Well, I own a BMW dealership. What do you do, sir? Well, I, uh, I work with thoroughbred horses and bring them to the races and travel with them and do this logistics. You wouldn't believe the look. It looked like I was an alien because the first person I saw was Nedelicki and he's like 6'10". <laughs> I walk up to him and shake his hand and they go back to me and they're like, how the hell did you know him? We've been coming to this for 32 years and you've been awesome, yeah. here five minutes and then yeah. Nedelicki introduces me to this guy, which introduced me to this guy. Yeah. Before you know it, I'm talking to Dr. Dunk, Kilman. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like, it's like I, all I'm trying to get you to see is, is you're only one connection and one conversation away from, uh, quite frankly, in our world, building the next three or four podcasts in your world, given that opportunity. I can, I can say with full confidence when you're in town and Mark has like a book signing because he has a, a, a book out about a former racer, okay. we can go right into that jewelry store or wherever he is in the Greenwood metro area and go in and shake hands and he would be a phenomenal guy so humble man if i messaged him right now he would probably message me right back and just give me information he's trying to get us some guests he doesn't have to do that man he's yeah he's a celebrity in my eyes in the sports world so i just want to throw yeah throw that out and, and we get to we we're blessed enough to have a, a small part of that you know and talk with people you know here from the city of indy and and surrounding you know states and things yeah, I mean that that's really cool. You said his name is Mark Monteith. Yes. Mark yep. Monteith. And we'll t- we'll I, talk I a little more off record. We yeah. we've got an interesting conversation, but yeah, he's uh I can I can definitively say you uh Indy 500 Pacers Colts. He's he's doing great things. Well, uh, I think I think I've actually so. heard that name before too, Mark Monteith. I think I heard You it. hear the name on the radio like 93.5 yeah. yeah. or or Sports Talk. Not only does he interview people, Colts camp, stuff like that, but he's yeah. always he's always doing nice things for people and 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 uh, uh, doing and spending his time giving back to the community. I, I think that's a you know philanthropic heart. I think that's an awesome thing. Yeah, for sure. Um, so I know that um, we're kind of uh, you know reaching the, around the forty five minute mark on the podcast, which um, I I've really enjoyed this time that we've been able to talk. But yeah, it's um, been great. We talked about a lot of topics, and I was just wondering if you two, um, because we were talking before, um, like you know, before the the weeks before the show, that uh, you wanted to kind of cover a little bit about yourselves because you know you're so used to just interviewing people and picking their minds that it's like, what if we picked our own? Like, what if we had someone pick our minds instead? So, is there anything that like you guys? wanted to cover that I didn't uh, ask you guys like for the viewers or anything like that. No, I mean, I just, I just thought it'd be a cool opportunity to, to actually talk about the podcast. You know, like it's uh, when you have somebody, the goal, you know, when you have somebody on as a guest is to do as little talking as possible Mm -hmm. and let them do, you know, ask, ask the, the short engaging questions so that they can do most of the talking. And that's something that I am still working on. And probably I'm guessing Jason too, because you know, like it's real easy to be like, Oh, me too. You know, I did this, da da da. you know what I mean? But like mm-hmm. when you, when you, um, when you got someone on that's, it's their, it's their spotlight. Right. So, um, yeah. So, I mean, like it's, it's nice to be able to have the spotlight a little bit and talk about the podcast. So, I mean, I think you did a great job. Yeah. I think I'm going to leave you with a a quick story, but I want to say something that what's cool is when you work with a podcast, like 
I got to be careful speaking for us, but an opinion that I don't think I'm going to get a lot of pushback in. When we first started, Nick was uh, very polished and he wanted to be researched, right? Mm -hmm. That drives me nuts because I got to be an ad lib guy. But do you know (laughs) what I've found? I gravitate more in the middle now because I want to know just enough to where I'm comfortable, but just enough ad lib. And I don't want to say Nick's gravitating that way, but Nick's very polished and wants to do things like that. But he's also getting great at the ad lib too, because it's to the point now where I don't even need to make contact with him. I know he's wrapping that answer up. I know he's punting it over to me. And that's what it goes with a broadcasting team. It doesn't matter. That's a good point. It doesn't matter if he's the color analyst throwing in color to it. It doesn't. And and the thing that's awesome is he's dominated some sports competitions and I'm over there pumping my (laughs) fist like, man, I'm going to keep my mouth shut because this dude's going off. Like point I'm making is I'm going to leave you with one final story, man. And I can't get any more Hoosier. I won't cry on you, but I'm going to be pretty darn close. So I'm going to, I'm going to finish this with a quick story. Um, not a lot of people have heard this story. When I was three years old, I had cowboy boots on and corduroys and my dad took a basketball goal, man. He tacked it up to the side of a barn. It was probably about four and a half to five feet high. And he had a huge rim that was probably double the size of a normal rim that he kind of made. Uh, he cheated for me. Let's just tell it like it is. But he wanted me to understand that you can make shots as a three or four year old, you know? Yeah. So I get a little older. I start throwing corn on the grass because my court was grass on a barn. I start throwing corn there And I find out that chickens dig in the grass and and pull up the roots. So they start pulling up roots and I'm like, dad, can I have a shovel? And he's like, what do you need that for, son? I start flattening that out and I just graduated to a dirt court. Okay. So I got a dirt court on a barn, right? And I'm talking slatted barns that you could see through uh, with, with separation of the boards, if you can kind of picture this. And then I graduated to a 10 foot goal. Well, to this day, you wouldn't believe that the English I put on the ball, the style that I play with, the forms that I've had, the dribbling that I have in a gym, I'm not going to brag on a lot of things because I'm 50 pounds overweight. I'm 45 years. My best days have been had for basketball, but I'm here to tell you, man, I can close my eyes and still go between my legs, behind the back, no look passing, because what's the saying here? I'm not going to butch it. In what what's the saying about in Indiana? Like I guess I I think it's basketball everywhere else, but this is Indiana. Something oh, it's that um Indiana is the basketball state, is what it like. Basketball yeah, is the is capital, grown basketball here. capital it's of the grown world here. Yeah, yeah. So then I graduate to gravel, man, and I'm graduating to gravel. I got news for you, man. When there was two inches of ice, I chipped away the ice for an hour just to play basketball. So if you think that I just casually, and you've seen me on the courts, man, I don't do anything casual. And that's a, <laughs> that's a fault of mine. Yeah. If I'm going to play something, I want to be competitive. I want to keep my sportship. I want to keep respect. But I guess what I'm saying is, is that all comes together in the game of basketball. That's why I told you that short story. And, and the mosaic minds just blends everything together. It takes basketball. It takes music. It takes passion. We're all good people. We all want to succeed. I tip my cap to you, man. You were brave. You were natural. You weren't nervous. I don't want to speak for Nick. He's got to edit a lot anyway because there's more than just clean sound or not. No. Nick's not going to have to do a lot of editing. I'm man. not going to do any editing. You, yeah, you killed it. I think good. Yeah, good we'll job. edit the beginning. But like, yeah, I'm not going to. I'm not going to edit any of it. I, I rarely, I rarely cut anything out. There's only been a couple times. I uh, there, <laughs> I won't tell the whole story. Understand, but, they, but there's only been a couple times that we had a we had this this one guest that controversial topic. I'll just leave it. At that. Uh, he was okay. okay, so he was like <laughs> he was like the uh, the the founder. I didn't even know this was such a subculture, but he was like the founder of like the pickup artist movement. Right? And he he said a couple things. I left most of it, but he said a couple things that I was like, I got to cut this out. My dad's a pastor. I was like, I got to cut this out. Or my, my dad's going to be like, uh, son, um, what what are you doing over there? Yeah. But I, I did want to say, um, you say you go to Huntington? Yes. Huntington In Huntington, University. Indiana, right? Yes. My niece goes there. Really? Yeah. What, what, uh, what class are you? I am the class of 2026. So that would make you a what? Sorry. I, I will a be a, I will be a junior this upcoming year. You'll be a junior. Okay, she'll be a sophomore. Williams? Okay. Yeah. 
but yeah, she she loves it. I went went and checked it. In fact, I went with my brother when when she um, started last year and like you know got to see her dorm and all that stuff and checked out the campus. Yeah, it's a beautiful, real, campus. real nice little campus. Yeah, yeah, it's a beautiful campus. My parents always talk about it. <laughs> Ryan, sorry about the humor and the analogy, but we're gonna kick an extra point. Last topic: If I want to search you or find you or learn about your broadcasting career. Um, how do we find you from a social media perspective? And then I want to give you a chance to throw out maybe a link or a mention to something on your campus that means something to you since you're an aspiring broadcasting. Yeah. I mean, so I'm not, I'm going to be pretty transparent. I'm not a huge social media poster person. I probably should be with my profession. That's something I'm going to have to get into is just to, you know, kind of promote myself a little bit out there, which is something that um, I'm working on for sure is I need to get a little bit more um, engaged in social media when it comes to posting stuff about, hey, I did this in the weekend. Hey, I'm covering something with this person or, you know, that kind of thing. But um, uh, somewhere, if you're interested, is um, Huntington University has basketball games that um, go and I've announced a couple of games, um, a pretty uh, one my freshman year, which would be the year 2023 or 2022, 2023. We, it was a, um, grace doubleheader of the girls and guys basketball game. And it was my first ever, uh, broadcast I had done for, uh, FDA nice. sports. Right. So, I right. mean, I'm not very polished and it's not like, you know, it's not a professional broadcast and it's not supposed to be, but, um, I think that it was, it was, it was a really good experience. My fellow, um, uh, host, uh, broadcaster, press and husband. He does a lot of HU stuff. He also does a lot of, um, broadcasting stuff other where he's a really cool guy. He's, um, he's the play by play. He, he was, um, he helped me out a lot. He taught me a lot of the stuff that I, that I take into it every single broadcast. So, I mean, if you want to check me out, there's tons of, um, I mean, I'm, there's a lot of different, like they rotate a lot of different color analysts for different broadcasts. So, um, you'll have to search through them to find me, but, um, I mean, yeah, FDN sports is really fun and we've added a lot to it. So it's, it's been a lot, it's been really good. Yeah. One thing I'll say too, is with, um, with especially like our first few interviews, cause our first few episodes was just the three of us talking, you know what yeah, I mean? Like yeah. we, we had a topic and we were just talking. But once we once it got real, it's like oh my god, we're having to actually have an interview. I was so nervous. I don't know. I can't speak for Jason, but like I was, I was so nervous. Like uh, you know, and and so I'm a firm believer in you know you grow by doing things that are uncomfortable. Yeah. And so like the more you do interviews and and do different things like that, the more confident. Not that you're not confident, but the more confident and comfortable that you'll you'll be. And one great way you were talking about social media and not really being on there, but one great way to do that too, because this still makes me pee my pants. Like sometimes is like the the idea of doing live streams. Yeah, that is that is like. But I mean, like if you if like you know, it's definitely healthy to not be on social media a lot. So that's awesome. That because I'm I'm already addicted. But you know, like you get on like TikTok or Instagram or something like that and do a live stream, the pressure is on. You know what I mean? Yeah, because yeah. like all your friends, anybody that's that's following you, you know, like you're just popping up there, and you know, so just a little piece of advice, like if you want to try to break out of your comfort zone a little bit. That's a, that's a good way to do that. Also, Ryan, my biggest piece of advice is even an instructor, you know, like if I'm your instructor, just throwing it out there, if I'm your instructor and you told me, I guess under the example that I'm your instructor under this example, Hey, I was on a podcast. Listen, you know, give, give me some advice, be comfortable, get yourself out there. But what's great about broadcasting is you can have 500,000 followers and not be good at broadcasting. You can have no followers and be great at broadcasting your connections and your networking and getting yourself out there. But he's absolutely right. If there's an open mic night, if there's an opportunity, if there's a volunteer, if you can, if you can hold, if you can hold the video equipment and not even run the video equipment, you're forcing yourself in the door. If you can, if you can contact them and say, Hey guys, you didn't have a spot for me for this event, but can I learn? that's how you build this podcast. That's how you build your future. That's how you do everything. So tip my cap to you, man. You're natural. You did a great job. Thank Tell you. the fam I said hi, and hopefully yeah, you were excited sure. about this as I did. Yeah, this so. is this is a great opportunity. I really enjoyed talking for 
It says almost about 55 minutes. <laughs> hey, man, it's so. cool. It's cool. Oh, yeah. hey, it's all good. We, we don't watch the time anymore. <laughs> Nick's taught me that. You know, it's just yeah. the conversation goes where it is. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I know you got some stuff to do. And, uh, you know, it was, a, it was a pleasure having you on. Yeah, for yep. sure. Thank you, guys. Yeah. Thanks for coming on, man. Yeah. Have a sure. good one. Thank you. Take care, buddy. See ya.